Here I am at Hogwarts, talk a little bit more about its legacy. But not that Hogwarts legacy. Maybe at a later date? Probably. So, Harry Potter is a very dear franchise to many people, despite the efforts of J.K. Rowling. And yeah, I know for a fact that many people experienced it in different ways. It's like one of the iceberg thingies that you see all over the internet. So, right at the top you have the people that first experienced Harry Potter by watching the movies by Warner Brothers. Then right under that you have like the people that experienced Harry Potter by reading the books, you know, the original source material. Then right below that you have the kind of weird kids that experienced Harry Potter by playing the PC and PlayStation 1 game. And right there at the bottom you have like the kind of freak people that experienced Harry Potter through the GBC and GBA games. Um, then tell me in the comments where in the spectrum you're falling. I bet you don't know where I'm falling. Hi, I'm Pedro from Ink Nintendo, and as I was growing up, for whatever reason, my mother didn't like me to watch the Harry Potter movies. And like, I was a kid, I wasn't going to read the books either, because, you know, books are lame as hell when you are a kid. You think books are lame. I never understood why she did that, but as I grew up, she relaxed a bit, and when I asked her for the making of this video, she couldn't remember too, so yeah, it's on the past, let's forget about it. I had a Game Boy Advance at that time, so that was the way that I found to experience Harry Potter, because, you know, it was all the buzz around that time, and I wanted a piece of that cake. Now that I say it out loud, it's kind of weird that she wouldn't allow me to watch the movies, but was perfectly okay giving me the games to play, so I don't know what's up with that, but uh, that's my history, I guess. And I think those were the best games to ever come out of this franchise. <laughs> yeah, I know, it doesn't look like anything special like this. It's what would you expect from a Harry Potter game on the Game Boy Color, but as soon as you walk into this blue cloud thingies, you will realize the mother f***ers at Kryptonite Games did the unmanageable and made Harry Potter a mother RPG, a turn-based RPG. And this is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Sorcerer's Stone for the Game Boy Color. So let's check out and see why exactly this game is so close to my heart, if you don't mind this nostalgia trip with me. Wingard you Leviosa! At the time, I only had Pokemon to compare this to, but now as a responsible adult that I am, I see how this is way more like Final Fantasy. So during battles, your main way of attacking are spells. No shit, right? So in order to use spells, you have magic points, okay? And each spell costs a little of that, varying from spell to spell and how strong they are. And then you have your stamina points, which is kind of self-explanatory, but that's how much damage you can take before a game over. And more importantly, what is the defining feature that makes this more like Final Fantasy than Pokemon, is that Harry is always on the right. Yeah, that's so Final Fantasy, guys. And look, you can even equip different items to make Harry stronger. But what I think I like the most about this game is how the developers clearly based the entire game around the book and not the movie. My best guess is that during development the movies were during production, so they didn't have much material to work with, and even some of the story beats follow closer to the book than the movies. Well, anyway, all I know is that Harry Potter and the Philanthropist Stone is a glimpse to what people thought the wizarding world was before. You know, what it might have looked like before all the imagery from the movies took over our public consciousness. So Hogwarts looks nothing like it does in the movies, with like these wacky statues all over the place and each floor. And I think that's a cool feature because it makes each floor feel unique. And with the limitations of the Game Boy Color, I think that was a clever way to make each of them feel distinct. You can visit a ton of different places and different classrooms. You can even find some secret ways between one place and another, and that's your sort of quick travel. It's great, man. I love it. And look at those amazing graphics! In all seriousness, though, <laughs> it might look like crap when blown up like this on YouTube, but you gotta imagine how this would look like on an actual Game Boy Color at that time. I'm sorry, guys. I actually lied. 
Because what I actually like the most about Harry Potter and the Physical Tree System is how you can collect cards of famous wizards and each of them comes with a little bit of lore that adds to the world. And that's not the only thing you can do with cards. You can also use card combinations in battle to deal massive damage to enemies. And as a bonus, you can also trade cards with friends who also have the game. Well, of course I didn't have any, but that's a cool feature, right? One other thing that I like about this game is how you don't automatically win the house cup by the end of the game. You know, like Harry always does. You actually have to do a couple of side quests and avoid teachers at night. You know, like a good student. Well, a Hogwarts student anyway. And you know what makes a good student? Not lying. The opposite of what I just did, because I lied to you again. Because what I actually like the most about Harry Potter in the Philadelphia Stone is that it has a Brazilian Portuguese language option. Look, you guys may not get it. And nowadays it's kind of commonplace for games to have Portuguese language options. But at that time, and especially on the Game Color, it was unheard of. And this played a huge deal in me getting sucked into these worlds that developers created and just experiencing Harry Potter, you know? So of course they ditched this feature in the sequel. Yeah. I mean, there is still a Portuguese option, but for the Portugal one. I, I don't know why it's that, because this is the NTSC version of the game, not the PAL one. I know, I know, Portuguese that, Portuguese here. It might not look like that different to you guys, but it is, trust me, it is. Even some names are completely different, but yeah, that's what I got. So anyway, I could still find my way around as a kid and finish the game. And to be fair, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets is a better game with way more stuff to do, so I guess there wasn't enough space for Brazilian Portuguese. But it is still weird that first game didn't even have a Portugal Portuguese option, but back to topic, in the Felix Stone you only play as Harry through like the whole game, but now you can have Ron and Hermione in your party, and that addition alone makes a whole difference, it brings a ton of depth to the game. Also, the first game was on the shorter side, and this one is way longer, I, it has way more meat. With like way more mini games and side things to do, it's great. Including the plot sticking closer to the book than the movie. It's the perfect sequel, if you can say that. Well, except for the character portraits, though, they still kinda suck. Then there is the third game in this Harry Potter RPG trilogy of games. And I say trilogy because those three were the only games that Kryptonite Games ever developed for the Harry Potter franchise. Even the GBA ports of the Philippine Stone and Chamber of Secrets are completely different experiences and were handled by different developers altogether. And with the more powerful hardware of the Game Boy Advance, of course the developers took advantage of that by completely removing the Portuguese language option, Brazilian or otherwise. Well, it's a shame, but Prisoner of Azkaban, well, obviously improves on the graphics while maintaining the core mechanics of the prequels. Now the devs are finally catching up to the movies and all the main characters look like their movie counterparts. Ron here looks a bit weird though. What's up with that weird eye? Do we have a red eye or something? <laughs> well, on the other hand, NPCs still look like they came straight off the first two games. And this difference is kind of jerry, which makes me think that at some point they were going to keep the style, but later in development, they changed to be more movie-like. I don't know if it was a studio mandate or whatever. That's pure speculation on my part. I don't mind that, but if you consider this a negative, I won't judge. Battles look way more like Golden Sun than Final Fantasy 2 this time. You can see this, right? This 3D transition is so Golden Sun. And not that this changed the core mechanics of battles or anything, it's pure aesthetic. Coming back from the first two games, you can also collect wizard cards and trade them with friends, all that good stuff. Prisoner of Azkaban is also a turning point on the franchise, I think. Things get way more serious than the first two games, and this is also perfectly reflected on the game. The soundtrack is great, it's very moody and chilling, I love it. It's a very enjoyable game from start to finish, and in many regards, a better experience than the first two games, I think. Well, in my opinion, these games get better on each entry, so of course this one would be the best. But it's toe-to-toe -to, -toe to the second game, honestly, they are both good. The only advantage this one has is just the graphics. And this whole trilogy is definitely worth your time. If you are into Harry Potter, if you are into retro games, or you are just like into RPGs, you should totally check this out.
And as I said before, unfortunately after the third game, Riptona Games would not return to develop these games. At least they are still around today under Foundation 9. And it's a shame that these games were just kinda lost to time. As per usual, licensed games' rights are all over the place, so seeing a collection of these is wishful thinking, to say the least. And yeah, you guys know that I'm not releasing this video just because Hogwarts Legacy is right around the corner and for once, I'm so excited for a new Harry Potter game. I haven't been this excited since I think it was the Half-Blood Prince for the Nintendo Wii of all things. It's a pretty good game, I didn't cover it today because I think those were the best. But that was pretty good too. And I'm so excited to explore Hogwarts in HD and like have this kind of full open world to explore. It's gonna be great. So, before I go out, do you want to see a new spell that I just learned in my visit to Hogwarts? Yeah, pay attention to this. Like to subscribe us. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've been Pedro from Nintendo and see you next time.